A recent number of articles have said that there's some big problems in America. They said that uh, permitting is facing issues all across North America. It's getting a little bit like Germany. Hard to get permits through for wind and solar. In spite of this situation, which the media are saying is shocking and it needs to change, there has still been an incredible increase in solar deployment this year versus last year. This is something the media are not talking about. They should be because a 50% increase is absolutely insane. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. What does this mean for America? It means a lot of things, actually, because wind deployment is also growing really, really quickly as well. Last year, for the entirety of 2022, in all of North America, 22% of all energy was renewable. Now, that's a pretty small percentage in comparison to places like, say, Spain, where it's now over 50%. Germany is 50%. Many places in Europe are nearly 100%, in fact. So it's not that great right now. But this speed at which this change is happening, even in spite of these very difficult permitting and regulations that we're seeing all across North America, mean some pretty impressive things are happening. In the first quarter of this year, US solar installations jumped 47%. That's despite import problems because of the tariffs imposed on Asian exporters. So it's a lot of Asian exporters, what they're doing, they're actually shipping their solar panels to Vietnam and other countries in Southeast Asia. And then they, they basically sell them from those countries in order to get around the bans or the, not bans, but the strict tariffs on Chinese solar panels. I think it's... Um, it's a bit unfortunate that they have to do this, but I understand why it's being done because the US government is trying to protect jobs in the United States, trying to protect manufacturing. And to some degree, that is necessary. I mean, if the US government hadn't have stepped in with the IRA, the automotive industry in North America would have been, uh, would have been almost finished. What I mean, almost finished, I mean, you know, in 10 to 15 years time from now, when Manufacturing of electric cars was at full steam in many other countries and not in the US. It would have been devastating for the US economy. And of course, the other reality here is that China has a monopoly on battery production. That isn't great either. IRA was necessary and it is working. Therefore, I do understand why the government chose to do that. The other thing worth keeping in mind is the government has, in, has decided to allocate billions of dollars as part of these IRA incentives as part of this entire package to ramping up solar and wind. Now, that has stalled because of these permitting rules and regulations. So most of the solar that we're seeing in these increases of nearly 50% is coming from residential homeowners. According to a report by Wood McKenzie and the Solar Energy Industries Association, they found new solar additions in the three-month period hit 6.1 gigawatts of capacity. Utility-scale solar installations actually did increase significantly, in fact, by 66% from the first quarter of 2022 to 3.8 gigawatts, while residential solar additions rose a similar amount to 1.6 gigawatts. However, the rate of new additions is slowing down under the weight of economic uncertainty, said the report, but it's not economic uncertainty. It's simply the difficulty with permitting. The authors said that some of the strong increase was the result of delayed projects finally moving forward as pressure on solar panel imports has begun to ease. Keep in mind as well, the cost of these solar panels has come down massively. The raw materials used to build solar panels, the key raw materials, they're actually around 50% cheaper now than what they were this time last year. And the three biggest solar panel manufacturers in the world are, well, they're having a, a, a race, a, not really a race, sort of like a, a fight between the three of them to see who can get more market share. They've been reducing their prices pretty significantly. So if you've gotten a quote recently from your solar installer and it's, say, a similar price to what it was this time last year, look for someone else because it shouldn't be. It should be cheaper. Imports rose to 12 gigawatts in the first quarter of 2023 compared to 29 gigawatts for the fall 2022. So if you times 12 by four, of course, to get the full year's figures, that would mean 48 gigawatts would be the run rate we're at this year versus 29 for last year. That's a big change. Solar power additions in the US accounted for 54% of total new electricity generation capacity 
built in the first quarter, with Florida leading with the new, most newly installed solar capacity. The majority of the remainder was wind, but clearly you can see solar is growing faster than wind is. Wood, Mac and the SEIA acknowledged that cost pressures remain high in solar power, but they added they expected these to ease later in the year as imports of cheap, affordable solar panels continue to increase from Southeast Asia and other places as well. For the full year, the authors of the report forecast that total capacity additions of 29 gigawatts in solar, up from 21 gigawatts in 2022. But the reality here is it's looking like that figure will be significantly higher than what analysts originally had thought. Looking ahead, solar power capacity additions between 2024 and 2028 are projected to grow by low double digits with the total for the five years seen at close to 236 gigawatts. A big reason for the upbeat forecast for the next five years is the Inflation Reduction Act, which envisages strong financial support for the solar power industry. Billions of dollars will go to solar and battery storage. The support will help solar capacity to triple from current levels by 2029. So the report is actually very conservative, but it's still saying five and a half years, solar capacity in the US will triple. Right now, solar only makes up around 4% of all energy use in North America. If it does triple, we could be looking at, uh, I would say, 15%. But I don't think that'll happen. I think it'll actually increase significantly more than that. If you look at the prices of panels now, they're just ridiculously low compared to what they were a few years ago. And this cost of energy is so low, I think it'd be cheaper to just get rid of the remaining coal power stations, get rid of some gas generation, and just install new solar. Even though it costs money to install it, I still think it would be cheaper within a very short period of time. It would pay itself back incredibly quickly. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.